harvest at Holly Wines. We're bringing in a little bit of Viennier today. Small berries, very sweet, aromatic. You can just, you can smell that spicy, flowery, apricot aroma right off of the grapes. Now, the grapes are being brought in. We're picking them up with our forklift in these one, one half ton bins. We like to use small bins because deeper bins would crush the grapes and we'd have a fermentation going before we really even got started. Since we like to control the process, we pick it in very shallow bins to avoid crushing of the grapes. We dump it in this little hopper. It has a screw auger in the bottom and that conveys the grapes at a very continuous pace and that's very important for the, for the working of our stem crusher. Now we're not using our stemmer crusher, a stemmer crusher today. We're using it to, to help us break the berries because the VNA is kind of a rubbery berry and it doesn't give its juice very easy. Okay, the Viognier grape is, is very kind of rubbery. It does does not crush easily. You can see that see how rubbery it is? If if I didn't crush the grapes before they went into the press, the chances are a lot of them wouldn't crush at all. They'd just be like bags of rubber uh, against the press membrane. So we're going through these kind of serrated rollers. And they, they crush the, the clusters, but they leave, leave the broken grapes on the grape stems. And the grape stems add, uh, act as a conduit to allow the juice to flow out. If we took, were taking the stems out of the grapes, it would make it much more difficult to get the, the juice out, we'd have to add some other item like rice hulls as a pressing aid in order to create those channels. So the grapes naturally help, help us in the pressing. So two to this wine, this is enough for one ton, 38 grams. We're, at, we're adding the sulfur dioxide because these grapes are typically fairly low in acidity and they could serve as a medium for bacteria or, or spoilage yeast growth. So by adding a small amount of sulfur dioxide it will shock them. By the time I add my commercial yeast in two days that will have dissipated. Now we're taking the juice inside into a stainless steel tank. Refrigeration on this tank. And we're gonna chill the, chill the, the juice in this tank to, to about 50 degrees tonight. Tomorrow when we come back, the, the vineyard dust will have settled into the bottom of the tank and will be very, very easy for us to decant nice clear juice off of the mud and the, and the grape solids in the bottom of the tank into the tank next door. And then we can add yeast and start the process of, of making wine. But it's important for us to, to get a good settling before we do that. You'll also notice that the whole winery is filled up with barrels. Uh, this is not really a coincidence. Since we, we're bringing in Viognier today, within four days we're going to have to put those grapes into a barrel. And so we're, we've got all the barrels down. We're rinsing them out inside with water in order to make sure that they're going to hold water. We've got a little barrel rinser here. And it several times a day we go from barrel to barrel just to get, get the insides wet and move on through. And after about four or five days, then the barrels will have rehydrated enough that they'll hold, hold the juice and will be ready to go. But it's, for many of these barrels, it may have been a month or two since they've had any wine in them. They've, the wood contracts and they are a little bit leaky at present.